It's really nice to be back in the agency life here at BPG. What, what are we doing together? What's the intrigue? And what I try to do is not like, I want to be positive and hopeful, but I'm not trying to say we're, we're the smartest in the world or we have yeah. answers. I'm just trying to be authentic about like, what, am I about? I, what I'm trying to do is really tell a little bit of the BPG, uh, Dennis Wakabayashi Global Voice of CX story. Here's my POV. This group has pioneered the concept of customer experience as a strategic advantage in this market. Many people hang their hats on different things, but CX is part of the culture here. It feels like a great second home for me around the world. And I've loved working with you guys. And that's really it. I just, I enjoy being here. I hope this relationship flourishes, but if it doesn't, I'm grateful for even just the few times we've worked together and I've like enjoyed it. So that's all I'm real. That's the story I'm telling. So Krom's here. And if you want to talk about, like, I'd be curious, what has been your experience working with the global voice of CX? Like, is it rewarding? Is it kind of cool? Is it kind of stupid and weird? Like, be honest, what's your take? Yeah, I think um, I think it's definitely like, uh, for me, it's been a, a bit of a, an eye-opener because the, um, I feel like the methods that you use are just new to me, you know? Like, and I've been doing this for 15 years or more, and um, I haven't seen people use data in that way, you know? I think that's what's really cool. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like... <laughs> That's part of the, the mad science of it all. Yeah, I hope so. And, but I'd be curious, do you think that this, like the way I'm exploring it, do you think it's valuable or do you think I'm just a crazy dreamer? Like I spend so much time trying to get these ideas back into reality so that they're, they're they hold value in our industry. Do you think I'm close? Do you think I'm far away? I mean, look, when the, I think the first time you walked in the room, you talked about like, you know, reading the weather. I was like, ooh, what is this going to be about, you know? But then the couple of projects that we've done together, I think I've shown that, yeah, the, the data is there and, you know, it, it's a very good tool for us to back up like the gut feelings that we may have, you know? And then to go into clients' meetings with, you know, the confidence that, hey, this is the right thing to do. And, you know, there's something valuable in there that we just unearthed that, you know, we should spend more time on and explore and figure out what it means. Hey, can I talk to you like a true ad guy? Go for it. <clears throat> you know as well as I do, we hammer and chisel at ideas at the marble of concepts so much to just get the reveal of one one sculpted idea that there's it is there's still an art form to it you can have all the data all the sharp chisels all the best hammers but we pick at things until the 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 art is revealed and I feel like this thing, Atlas, that I have, it's really just a different kind of chisel. It's not, I don't, wouldn't say it's like a magic chisel. You don't just like set it on a piece of marble and the thing pops out, you know, but. Yeah, you're right. I think it's a very good metaphor. And uh, it's, it's good to hear you talking about it like an art form because, you know, we sometimes forget about that in the urgency of the day and whatnot. Um, and also because we take a lot of pride in the work, but like at the end of the day, I think that's all we do, you know? So I'll tell you, I was looking at your creative on, on a recent campaign and <clears throat> here's what was going through my mind. While the team was, I think, very gracious and kind to the new guy and supportive of my, my thinking and my chiseling, I was looking at your work and I was thinking, you know, you have a image and you have this idea overlaid on top of it. And then you've got this 
visual representation of these little dots that form a visual that is iconic, it resonates, it's apropos, but it's also, it's a, it's a overlay or a fusion of one brand and another uh, subculture together that when I saw it was instantly recognizable. And I was just thinking, no amount of data mining ever could produce that. No, no amount of uh, research and study could have fused those two things into a, a visual. And I was thinking that's what great advertising is. It like, it's a reveal. I would venture to say that no AI system would be able to do that um, independently at any scale yet. I would agree with you for now. Anyways. That's right. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a great example that you, you, you've chosen. Uh, although in that case, I like to think that, you know, the reason why it resonated is because, you know, we've picked, uh, we've taken a look at our audience and understood what they're about. This idea of, you know, microcultures and the idea that personas are dead. I mean, you know, we can all be five different people in the same course of a day, and that's normal. That's the world that we live in today. I think that's very important. It makes our job harder, right? To find a, because AI is very good at, you know, scale and speed and automating, right? So if it's about churning out 20 creatives for 20 different sub audiences, that's fine. But if it's about making one, that's going to work with all these 20 audiences at the same time. They're all going to go and look at it and be like, wow, that's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. The, there's, the human mind still has more data input and more ability to synthesize than a microchip. This is what you were saying about art? That's exactly what it is? Yeah. Are you going to go and ask AI to go and do the Mona Lisa again? from scratch without knowing the Mona Lisa, it's kind of hard to do, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I look forward to our adventures. I do think that what it may do, our partnership, is give us the ability to, I hope, create new concepts, even if there's just a few. If, if we strike magic on a concept that has the scale of relevance and the the artistic resonance that um, is human at scale i think that would be pretty cool yeah i look forward to that too and what do you, what do you hope to accomplish like those are my dreams what do you what do you hope happens i mean you know if 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 we can well, i'll tell you what i hope probably every day when i come to work is that at some point, somewhere in this building, on this floor, someone is going to stumble into something great. And I will be able to chisel it and to, you know, bring it to the shape that it needs to be. Uh, without hopefully too much chiseling, because, you know, if it's just a tiny piece at the end, it's not much for the eye to see. Um, and then now we can put that out into the, the market and see how people react to that. Yeah. Do you have a favorite campaign recently? Like so many of the campaigns have become shittier and shittier. Like yeah, is is there is there a campaign that you're like There's so I was lucky I was um, I was invited to judge a few awards this year, so I've, I've been through like a lot of cases. I think one of the the ones I'll, I'll remember this year for sure is um in a little island called Puerto Rico, uh, which is prone to, you know, electricity shortage and shortage and, and the power cuts and whatnot, um, they realized that they had a problem, which is something that we don't think about every day. So all people take medicine, right? And the older you get, the more you get, right? And um, when there's a power shortage and you have to take your pills, then you can't find them. And, you know, you have five boxes and you don't know which one to take and which order and at what time. Because you can't read any of that in the dark, right? And they basically, all they did is they made the labels fluorescent, glow in the dark. 
And that's a, as simple as that. And I loved it because it was such a simple idea and you can instantly see the scalability of it and how this can be taken from Puerto Rico and, you know, it could work in Pakistan, it could work in, you know, Ghana, it could work in, you know, Bolivia, it could work anywhere, right? And I thought that was beautiful. And I think this is, you know, this is when we will to do this, that's the best that we can do. Yeah, I love it. Well, that's why I like working with you. I, we, we have, we, we believe in the same things. Well, it's been a pleasure. I'm going to go ask Valley if he wants a sound clip and um, I'm going to just kind of pop in. I'm here. I leave for Vietnam on Saturday, but I was going to stop in here each day, do a little content, maybe meet a couple people. Yeah, and, good. and uh, I'm here one week, so you're always welcome to come and hang out. Hey, yeah, maybe, maybe we could get a coffee or something. I'd love to just pick yeah, your brain. Pleasure.